This is polar motion example one. And what we're going to be looking at is basically just a, a quick little overview. I, I'm just going to start off with um, polar motion because it's actually one of the more complicated uh, styles. But uh, let's just get a feel, an intuitive feel for when things are increasing and de decreasing and then we'll actually start working into numbers. So I'm just going to write a simple situation here. Let me just make one up. You have, since I can draw birds, you have little birds here. That's point A. You have a bird here. B. Then here. This is C, okay? Now we have, let's just put an individual standing right underneath B. And what he's going to do is he's going to be looking at A, B, and C, okay? So you're going to have A, you're going to have B, which is going to be directly above, then you're going to have C. First of all, whenever you do your measurements in, um, in polar, you need to have similar rules as you did in cylindrical. You need to have a base. So let's just say that this is our zero degrees, okay? So thus, when we are trying to determine our angle at to the radius A, that line, you just do it from the zero angle. So this would be theta A, and then you can see how it would just escalate over to B, and I won't do C, but you can you can tell what it will be. It's just straight from that uh, from the zero line. So um, realize that each of these is a radius line, and actually, whenever we use polars, um, we really do want to be using a capital R, but um, you know, really. They do that just so that you know how to mix between. We're just going to keep this um, the same. Now let's imagine actually that it's not three different sets of birds, but let's say that the birds from A are going to B and the birds from B are going to C. So it's almost like maybe it's one group of birds, but they're going from A to B to C. Okay, And let's say their velocity, their V, is constant. Okay, so maybe we can just find out something here. Let's get a, a, gather just a general in, intuition on what's occurring here based off of just these two parameters. So let's just say at A, B, and C, what is happening? Okay. What's happening to these variables, okay? What's happening to r, the value of r? What's happening to r dot, or r double dot? Or what's happening to theta, theta dot, or theta double dot? And all I want to know is, um, at that instant, at that exact instant, is the value positive? negative or zero. And that's all we're trying to find out. Not is it going to be or anything, just what is it at that exact time. And all this is doing is just providing us with a, a brief little um, amount of intuition of how polar coordinates work. And this is actually a good review for cylindrical as well, if you didn't uh, touch on that one. So, but let's do it. We have are different variables. You have r, r dot, r double dot, then you have theta, theta dot, and theta double dot. Okay, so I'm actually going to break this apart, but I just wanted to have a little table here for a, b, and c. So here's our small table, just for those of you that are keeping track. So, first of all, R. What you need to realize is that R is positive in all three of these instances. Why? Because R does not go negative. Um, if you have a direction, 
So r is always greater than 0. Okay, so it's positive. We know it's positive. And actually, all, for all of them, it's positive. And why is that? Because let's say you're looking in this direction, just the direction of this point. Okay? This arrow. Okay? A positive r indicates some direction in this direction. A negative r would indicate something in the opposite. So just realize that this is negative and this is positive. And for this instance, the birds are never going to go into the ground. They're never going to go beyond that point of reference. And even so, um, you have to ask yourself, could it ever really, in, in polar coordinates, can capital R ever really be um, not less than less than or equal to zero. Is this never true? And I would actually oppose to you propose to you that this is always true. That no matter what, capital R is always greater than or equal to zero. And that's just because you're always using a singular, a singularity to set up a point of reference. Um, however, some people do prefer uh, having a directionality to their um, arrows. So I just wanted to point out that this is uh, a, the standard for it. So, okay, so then you have your R dot. Basically, is this, is the length of your radius increasing or decreasing because that's what the r dot is it's your it's a velocity of some sort so what you see is from r a to r b we have it actually shrinking so you could say that it's going smaller then from r b to r c once again it's getting larger because it's the distance. It's almost like wh which one's further away, you know? It's like A, it's far, A, it's far, and then B, it seems to get closer to, to the person, and then it's getting further away. So you can just see how, what the trend is. Now, R double dot, what is that? R double dot is the acceleration. How, how quickly is that um, accelerating? Is it, is it speeding up, or what, what, what's happening there? And uh, you have R double dot, and if you have a speed, um, imagine you have um, an almost like an asymptotic relationship here, where you have a distance that's really far away from this point. Um, as something's traveling along this line. You can tell that this angle, this angle right here, is not going to change much as it goes further out to the right. However, when if it goes the opposite direction, if it goes left, then you'll see that this angle, as it passes, it changes drastically. So you can just see from the different lines I've driven, uh, drawn, one, you have very little change, and then as you go two to three to four, you would have an interesting theta change. So that that's the concept behind it. Um, it it's all it's saying is that uh, while you do have that in, interesting theta change, look also what's happening to the length of r, and I would suggest that once it hits point b. We don't have any change in length of R. There's no change happening there. I mean, it it is going to grow, but at that time we are at what I would just call a standstill. So I would suggest that we would have some sort of maybe minus zero plus just because it's speeding up. So I would say minus zero plus. And this is all based off of the convention that you use. So. Uh, for theta, we know that theta is always based off of zero, so each of it's going to be plus, plus, and plus, because it's always based off of our zero. And then you have your theta, uh, theta dot, 
which your theta dot will be uh, how is it is, is it speeding up what, what's happening and what you'll realize is that uh, initially it, it, it will be speeding up it, it, I mean it's always going to be increasing in in direction so you know that this is always going to be going in a positive as well because it's always going in the positive direction you never see uh, theta uh, theta go from uh, at one point it'll be at uh, 60 and then at, it'll be at 40 no 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 it, it no it, it always goes up it's always 40 then 50 then 60 whatever the case may be it's just going upwards now your theta dot which you can see would be the similar uh, reaction as the other one uh, as your r double dot you have plus zero and negative it's all really technical stuff let's just run into an example